Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people out there, and welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm Star17, and uh, today I'll be showcasing a new playthrough, uh, which I put together um, for Minecraft uh, Stoneblock. Uh, so Stoneblock, uh, or Feed the Beast Stoneblock, is what we're going to be looking at showcasing today. I want to kick off a Let's Play with you all. Um, with my current kind of playthrough, which I'll be running kind of intermittently amongst other things, um, but I'll be hoping to get a video out onto YouTube once a week um, so that we can all move through the playthrough together and uh, I can get some good interaction with you guys, hopefully in the comments thread as well. Uh, one thing I would really, 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 really hope to have uh, from you guys watching is uh, just a couple of likes from you. I'm going to set a episodic like counter uh, in place um, to try 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 obviously to, to, to garner some of your great likes um, let's set the measure low to start with um, as, as we build up with this one but I'm, so I'm going to ask you all guys if we can try and achieve 50 likes for this video that would be absolutely fantastic so uh, if you haven't done so already click the thumbs up button below and uh, yeah, if you're not a subscriber already, please click the subscribe button too. And um, hopefully you'll be able to get notified of all of the uh, future updates um, from the channel itself. We, we run a, a number of different uh, Let's Plays and um, yeah, hoping to kind of roll out a lot more Minecraft in the near future as well. But as, uh, as we talked um, about already, we're going to be doing Feed the Beast Presents Stone Block 2. I downloaded this uh, mod pack specifically from uh, Cursed Forge, uh, which I'll put the link in the comments for you all to, to, to navigate to if you're interested in playing this yourself. Uh, as you can see here, it's running over 200 mods. Um, and uh, for any of you guys that kind of like modded Minecraft, you can actually go through this yourself, have a look for yourself specifically. As you can see there, there's, there's a number of different ones that you can look at, switch on, switch off if you want to. Um, Obviously, the other options from the kind of the user interface at the beginning, issue tracker, change logs, I, I wouldn't worry about those too much. Uh, in the options, though, you've got options here, better FPS options, music and sound, skin customization, which interestingly allows you to tweak um, some of the aspects of those. Um, and I'll probably have a muck around with some of the settings as we go, just to make that um, uh, video recording better for you guys to see. But without further ado, let's get started with a new world. So we will rename this one to, what should we call it? Let's call it uh, YouTube um, something uh, playthrough. Yeah, I think that should do, right? YouTube playthrough. Um, you won't see this again after this point specifically, but uh, you know, here from here, you can obviously select hardcore mode, creative mode, survival mode. I'm just gonna go in um, as the designers or the, the, the developers intended. Um, so go straight in as a survival playthrough and we'll kick off uh, loading into the world, guys. So Stoneblock, what is Stoneblock? Um, so you'll see in just a couple of moments what, what we're dealing with here specifically, but if you've ever heard of Skyblock, which is Minecraft in the sky, you have no access to the ground, you have no access to caves, you have no access to mining and things like that. Stoneblock is kind of the inverse of Skyblock, uh, where everything is underground, and everything you do is underground. Um, so you, you get no access to the overworld whatsoever. Um, so how you play the game is very differently, how you, how you manipulate your way through the game is very different as well. One of the great things about this version of Stoneblock is the quest book system, and I'll show you that in just a couple of moments as well, as this is going to be a great guide point for us to kind of work through this game itself. Um, so we'll just let it load in a second, get all the frames right. Um, my computer unfortunately is archaic. Um, I have upgraded the RAM over Christmas. Uh, so we're running with 32 gig RAM now, but I don't have a fantastic uh, GPU. So I'm running a two gig Nvidia kind of installed um, chip that's inside my laptop. Uh, one day though, I hope to obviously upgrade all of my gear so that you guys get a better experience your end. So we get a pet rock to start with in our inventory and um, also check out the custom skin I've put together. Um, I am a spaceman, as you can see, I've made this myself. Um, going to a website called um, 
Minecraft skin customization um, and you can you can kind of draw your own skins from there and this is what I came up with um, so yeah um, trying to keep it kind of fitting to the to the channel specifically and we get a pet rock as well obviously that's that's gonna be good for us we, we, we we're not going to be able to see you know many mobs certainly in the beginning anyway so it's nice to have somebody to talk to if we need to um, this is the quest book system as you can see here we have a number of different kind of topics across the top um, and this is where we kind of are at the moment so I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see the full extent of what we're working with here and we'll be working from the far left across to the right and following the trees from there so building block of life is our first task pebbles are obtained by breaking stone with an empty hand you can throw them or craft them into cobblestones so it looks like they want us to create 16 stone pebbles to start with and using our hand on the stones we get pebbles as you can see that they're, they're falling flat on the ground there so we've just picked up six and um, yeah what I'll do is I'll probably just bash out these corner pieces here that should give us enough to get started with 16 is what we need to kick off boom boom and boom that's 18 right pet rock you're obviously in the way I'm gonna try and navigate around you if I can you're good you're good all right good stuff so we've got 26 pebbles uh, which we now need to go into our quest book obviously we get the option there to claim our reward get a reward for every quest we complete and what do we get we get a forge lexicon okay that's interesting so yeah let's just check out what a forge lexicon is um so it looks like it's some kind of book of some format it gives us information about certain things that we can do with the forge perhaps uh, if i type in pebble it comes back with nothing so i guess we can't interact with the pebble with a forge let's try something else netherite i think this game yeah is a little bit too um well this mod pack is a bit too old for kind of netherite diamond so we can make blocks of diamond dusts of diamond gem diamonds nuggets of diamond and ores of diamond um information consult the knowledge of the world and alter your personal destiny empower the lexicon to force the world to obey your choices well that sounds both interesting and sinister um, but I don't think that's going to matter too much to us yet. We don't even have a forge, so I think probably we'll just we'll just keep our keep our hands on that and move on with the game. Um, cool. So we've just finished the first quest. Moving on to the second one here. Make cobblestone. Combine four pebbles into cobblestone. So I guess what we do now is we open up our inventory and we'll just drop our pebbles into the four slots there. Yep. Looks like that's going to make us some some pure cobblestone. So there's four pieces to get us started. Um, we've got 10 pebbles left, I guess. Uh, how many do, oh, we need to make 12 cobblestones. Okay, so we're gonna need a, a, a bit more pebbles to, to finish up this quest specifically. But we're on the right road. Pet Rock, what do you think? Where should we chip into next? I am terrible when it comes to um, uniform pattern symmetry um, when playing Minecraft so I, I only really want to take the blocks out that um, aligns nicely with how I feel and, and with respect to my Minecraft feng shui uh, so let's um, let's pop a couple of these blocks out to start with doop -a -doop -a -doop, doop -a -doop -a -doop. got some pebs uh, yeah, it's a little bit dark on the screen. Um, I'll see if I can do something about the brightness in just a moment to make it a little bit more uh, visual for us. I know that by the time I put this up on YouTube, I think it gets a little bit darker. So uh, let me see what I can do to uh, tweak that in just a moment. Just grab those pebbles. Hello, Pet Rock. Um, already we started to kind of chip out a nice symmetrical kind of squarish area there um, my aesthetics are, are somewhat more pleased by that I would I would say let me know how you feel about this mod pack guys you know in in the comments threads if you've played this before 
Um, try not to drop me any spoilers as I'm kind of working through this as we go. But um, how do you feel about Stoneblock as a kind of a prime principle um, game variant, I would say? You know, very different, obviously, than Vanilla. And, you know, gives you something else to think about when playing the game. And that's one of the things I like about modded Minecraft is that you can take the base game and you can set new rules and new measures and new principles and how you play it, how you interact with it, essentially how you beat it. So in this one, I guess the end game is beating the Ender Dragon, but doing everything from underground. And that is an interesting concept if you think about it, because, you know, how am I going to get Ender Eyes? How am I going to make an end portal? How am I going to, you know, even get to the dragon? How then is the end going to look? Yeah, let's change the, the brightness for you guys now so that... Um, we can get this as bright, as bright as you can so you can see everything that's going on. So we'll brighten this up to 100% or bright is the setting on here. Let's see if that makes any difference whatsoever. But yeah, guys, let me know You know how you feel about uh, a, a stone block. Um, that's a little bit better. You can definitely see a lot more now. Um, you know, Like I say, I'm a big fan of, of, of trying different ways of playing this game. So uh, Okay, so we can make 16 out of the pebbles we just grabbed, but we only need 12. So let's not go crazy. Uh, we've got our 12 blocks there. We've just completed that quest. Um, okay, let's check out our random reward. Another Forge Lexicon. Okay, so we've got two of those now. One for backup in case we lose one. What's next? Craft a cobblestone chest. It's like a regular chest, but made of cobblestone. Um, so what's that? So that's cobblestone all around the outside. Um... I guess we make a crafting table first. Actually, let's not deviate from the quest book. Let's go back to the quest book a second. Okay, so crafting time. Make a stone crafting table. The stone crafting table works similarly to a regular one, but items will stay safe inside. That's quite interesting. So let's make that crafting table there out of stone. Nice gray finish on this one, or nice stone finish on this one. And let's drop that one down uh, over here by the torch, I think, so we can see what we're doing. Hey, <coughs> look at that. Reward collected, resonant jetpack. Now, if there's ever an opportunity to you know, improve the, the character we've created. Why not put a jetpack on the back of that spaceman? Look at that. That looks fantastic. Um, I think it's pretty redundant here underground. Um, we're got, not going to need to be jetpacking around too much, but um, certainly makes my, my user character here just that little bit more professional in what he's doing. Full EVA space suit, and now we've got a jetpack on the back as well. Uh, those resonant jetpacks are pretty tough to make, actually. Um, some of the materials, so... Quite interesting that the game just gives that one up. Easy peasy. And there we go. Um, we can make the furnace that way. But we're not making a furnace. We're making a chest. So how the devil do we make a chest? So let's have a look here. Stone chest. There it is. Cobblestone chest. We need to make cobblestone parts. Okay. So we make a cobblestone part by... Okay. Two cobblestones in a diagonal fashion. Need four of those we've definitely got enough cobbles for that so let's go ahead and uh, make the chest then so back to the crafting table one there one there we need to do that four times so let's drop in four in each slot and we'll take our four parts stick them in the square this game lies a little bit because it's not the complete same as making it um, you know, out of normal parts, like normal but stone. Not, well, not quite, but um, we get it. We found it. We've got it. Okay, let's stick this one here next to this. There we go. That's a nice looking chest, isn't it? And we can drop these two lexicons in there that we don't need at the moment. And we'll stick the apple in there and um, and we'll keep the pebbles and we'll keep the quest book. And good. That's another quest completed. So. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? What's our random reward this time? Let's find out. A cobblestone generator. Okay. Um, 
cobblestone, cobblestone all around. So grab yourself a drink. I think this is going to be somewhat redundant to us. So let's stick it down here next to the um, next to the crafting table. Uh, oh wait, that's kind of facing the wrong way. Let's just pop that back out and see if we can flip it around. And I broke it. Excellent. That's now gone. I would be more upset if I thought it was going to be a valuable um, thing, but I don't think it is. So, thanks for the five cobblestone, I guess. All right, back to the quest book. So our next quest is Dirt Mouth. Craft a stone hammer and use it on cobblestone to get gravel and then to get dirt. So we need to craft a stone hammer and then we need to make a bunch of dirt. So that is our next quest. Um, so yeah, we pop down the cobblestone then. Although before we do that, we also need to make that stone hammer. So how do we do that stone hammer? Oh yeah, that's the cluster hammer there at the top left. And... Um, yeah. Um, so we need two, oh, two stone sticks to make the handle. And then I think it's just regular stone. Yeah, like that. And then regular stone kind of on the adjacent top there to make one of those. So how do we make stone sticks? It's not, oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna make some cobblestone. Why not make all of them? Uh, one, two, that's no, that's a cobblestone part. We've done that one already. There we go. Oh. One there. No. Sorry, like that. Stone rods. Let's grab four of those. And then we put one there, one there. And a stone rod, and a stone rod. And we get a stone hammer. Fantastic. It's hammer time. So now that we smash these cobblestones, we get gravel back. And I guess if we replace or place down this gravel, one, two, three, four, five, and hit these with the hammers, we should get dirt. So yes, we do. There it is. We have Dirt Mouth. Quest completed, Dirt Mouth. What a funny name for a quest, Dirt Mouth. Cool. Okay, so opening up the quest book, let's have a look at our random rewards. What do we get? <laughs> Basic flux storage. Okay. Probably not going to come in any handy here and now, but um, stores energy in the flux network. Maybe later we might have some use for it. We'll just box it for now and move on to the next quest. So crooked or crooked. Uh, stone crook can be used on dirt to get any vanilla sapling. You can rapidly sneak to speed up the growth of nearby crops. So we need to make a stone crook. Um, and that is the principle of our quest here and now. How do we make that? So that is uh, just four cobblestones in that shape. In a Tetris shape. Now, I always enjoyed that Tetris shape because it would fit in beautifully uh, to make a nice uh, possible Tetrade if, if, you, if you were lucky enough. Cool, so that's that quest completed now. Let's hit our random reward. What do we get? A block no! of Insanium Essence, whatever the devil that is. Um, let's uh, drop it in here. Mystical Agraditions, uh, but it has a EMC value of... 73k or more so uh, probably might um, be a good use of power later on maybe we'll find out um, so now that we've got our stone crook uh, we're able to beat that to get saplings there's a birch sapling and uh, there's another birch sapling there's an oak sapling that's an oak sapling oh no we got a, what looks like a dark oak sapling and a jungle sapling as well so we've got a range of different saplings there from the dirt uh, i think we'll probably kick off though using something basic something neutral um i've got a funny feeling that if i try and make dark oak jungle or um some of the more complex trees let's say um it might not necessarily fit in this small chamber that we've got to work in so let's start with the basics the birch or the oak uh, just smash these cobblestones into gravels with our stone hammer. We are definitely learning how to play this now. 
uh, drop, drop this gravel down here, smack it with our hammer again to get the dirt. We have four dirts to plant some trees, I guess. Um, so, checking our quest book, photosynthesis is for suckers. Use the dirt and saplings to, um, to make a, a tree from the sapling. So we'll just, uh, we'll try and maximize the space in the room. Dropping one right down in the middle there, or is that the middle? Hang on, let's just count this out. Three to three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Something's not quite right here. Oh yeah, of course it is, because we've started bashing out some parts of the wall, now everything's not straight. This is going to annoy me. Um, I might have to do something about that eventually, but uh, for now, let's just straighten this up a bit, at least so when I look at it, it doesn't look completely out of symmetry. Um, so one there, one there, we're going to go with the arrow up decal. Um, uh -huh. But at the top doesn't look right, does it? So let's knock that piece out. Yeah, this is really going to upset me in the long run. Um, okay, <laughs> looking better but not perfect. That one out, and I'll pop that one out. There, it still doesn't line up properly. Do you know what? We'll sort that out. We will sort this out. Let's just let's just get on with the game. Let's just get on with the game. So let's um, look at this again. Yeah, I don't like that. That's not straight at all. So I'm going to put the the torch there in that empty spot. Whatever. Let's line up with the crafting table, I guess. So, okay, yeah, we're gonna grab the birch sapling to work with to begin. Drop it in there, and another one in there. And we twerk, twerk, twerking up and down. Twerking is just hamming shift until your tree grows. Um, so yeah, one of the fun mods that gets added into this is the uh, kind of shift to, to grow function. Um, so we can just stand here twerking away and eventually the second tree will grow and we'll be able to harvest all of its good times. Although I've got a funny feeling that uh, this other tree is probably right in the way of it and our pet rock has decided to go and stand in the old sapling there. So why not... Um, do something about that now knock down this tree yeah let's knock down this tree um, another great mod that gets installed in this mod pack here is the auto degradation of the of the leaves so you'll see in just a second when I take this tree out all of the leaves should decompose really quickly dropping all their goodness on the ground Didn't get any saplings out of that one. That's a shame. All right, so we're left with the one sapling here planted. Let's twerk, 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 and twerk some more. We're gonna keep on twerking until we can't twerk no more. And why isn't that one growing? Twerk, 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 twerk. That's the mini map. Can't twerk from, oh yes I can, twerk from there. God, this is a persistent persistent sapling this one let's just keep spamming the old twerk button looks like this tree doesn't want to be twerked on uh, anything wrong with the lineup out a couple of these up here that might help it along better better -er. 
and I'm really upsetting the balance of the uh, of the symmetry now. I'm going to have to desperately do something about this in a bit, I think. Um, all right, let's see if that's made any difference whatsoever. So we will twerk, twerk, twerk some more. Twerking like we're at Studio 54. I'm twerking. I'm twerking here. This twerk is not working. it seemed to go up fine when I used the other dirt block so let's stick it in there try this again instead twerk 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 in again we're gonna keep on twerking to the tree grows there we go straight up straight up tree growing okay we just smash out the wood punch those logs punch them out punch 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 Go. nice little decomposition we get some saplings that time too two of them that's good so we did not lose any of the birch saplings we started with all right so 16 times of any wood we've got 10 we need six more so let's make a couple more trees real quick get rid of that because that's just causing us problems and symmetry because we like it goes here goes there and goes there. Okay, let's um, let's let's twerk this tree up. Let's finish this quest, I think. So does this give us enough to finish the quest? I think probably we might need to make one more. some more okay, that's, that's that's our final tree there that's gonna allow us to complete this final quest okay, one more block of wood and that's the tree done and auto decompose there we go beautiful and there's a couple of birch saplings over there we, we're up to six saplings now that's good profit great profit um good okay so that's that quest done i believe let's just quickly check there's nothing else lying around in any of the holes we've made doesn't look like it and we'll chuck up the stuff we don't need so the pebbles the birch saplings the rods there's our 20 logs we'll hold on to those the dirt can go up and we'll keep the tools quest book photosynthesis is for suckers and uh, let's let's finish that quest up a water candle what the devil is a water candle very interesting let's check that out real quick uh, increase nearby spawns when lit Guys, uh, if you've played this before and you've played this mod pack uh, let me know in the comments what a water candle can do for us do you know what? I think that kind of will bring us to the end of this episode. But what I would like to spend a bit of time doing is tidying up our workspace a little bit. So um, I'm going to fast forward and give you guys a little bit of a time lapse of us just kind of 
fixing this room and I'll be back with you for an outro in just a couple of seconds. I think we'll slow it down there from a, from a time-lapse perspective and just finish up the episode for today. Guys, thank you so much for being with us. This is Star17 signing off. Uh, we've completed seven quests today, I think, counting that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven quests. Yep, exactly. Um, so looking forward to trying to complete a few more quests on the next episode. Um, I've tidied the, um, the, 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 the cave up a little bit. As you can see, it's all nicely straight, nicely angled, and um, just left it with a tree in the middle. So guys, thank you so much. Really looking forward to seeing you again on the next episode. Take care now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bruh. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people. Welcome, welcome to Star 17 Gaming's episode 2 of Stoneblock, Feed the Beast Stoneblock. Uh, we're back, back in the game, um, here to play a little bit more for you, complete some more quests if we can. I'm going to set myself a mission today to um, complete uh, one major quest specifically. I'm just going to show you here, um, which is uh, Silk Road, Tinkering. And if we can, the mining dimension, visit the mining dimension. If I can get those three quests done today, I would be a very, very, very happy individual. So let's kick off with the Tinker Station. Tinker's construct tools can be repaired and upgraded with materials. Uh, we need to make a tool station, stencil table, part builder, pattern chest, and that will allow us to complete this quest. Um, I love Tinker's construct uh, as a mod, as part of um, some of these modded playthroughs, as it uh, really gives you a great, great, great different way of making tools you know, to play within the game. And uh, a little bit later on, you can upgrade those tools and they are just absolutely phenomenal. So looking at what we need then to make some of these items, blank patterns and a variety of different items like wood and um, crafting tables, as well as logs. Um, to make the patterns there, we need two sticks, we need two, two planks, and yeah, uh, that should be very straightforward for us to put together. So it should be a very straightforward quest to complete at the beginning of this uh, episode today. Um, since the last episode, um, 
I have been tinkering around with the, um, the, the the production of the video so hopefully hopefully you will enjoy this video a little bit better than the previous one I did bump into a little little problem uh, the recording I made um, didn't record any audio of my gameplay unfortunately I'll fix that for next time not a big issue I'll put some sound in the background just to kind of drown me out a little bit um, so it's not just me talking over the top of this video um, but yes we've left we've lost our clicking we've lost our you know interaction noises um, our mining sounds and things like that we'll get that back on track for next time around so looking here at um, what we need then so let's kick off then with a few um, uh, blank patterns um, so we'll stick a uh, set of planks there and there to make some sticks and then we put two planks like this we put two sticks like that and that allows us four blank patterns uh, so we'll stick one up there we'll stick a plank underneath it that'll give us the stencil table the stencil table is really good at creating the stencils for the the tool that you're looking to, to create uh, the next thing we need to make there then will be the uh, the part builder. Uh, so here is the part builder that allows us then to build the individual parts towards the item we're creating. So if it's a pick, you know, you, you, you make three stencils for the three separate parts to make the pick and then the part builder, you make those parts. After that, you need a tool station to fit them all together. So what do we need to do that? We need a crafting station uh, with a pattern on the top. So we know how to make those. One, two, three, four planks for a crafting table. Slap it there, pattern on the top. And hey presto, it's a tool station. I think the one of the last things that we need to create there then will be the, um, it's the pattern chest, I think it is. Uh, not the stencil table, star 17, it's the pattern chest. Um, Obviously had a little bit of a mind blank when I was creating this back then. But yeah, pattern chest holds either patterns or... Um, I didn't catch what the last part of that just said there. But uh, how do we make that? Well, we just need a uh, chest. Like so. Take a chest, whack it down there, slap a blank pattern on the top. And hey presto, we get our pattern chest. That's the quest completed for tinkering. Like I said, that was a very straightforward one. We had the parts to do it, so it was quite quick and easy for us to do. So let's pop down the pattern chest here. Let's put down the tool station. Uh, no, let's put the stencil table next to it because then they speak to each other. We'll put the part builder in next. We'll put the tool station in next. And there we have it so as you can see there pattern chest if we make patterns we can keep them in there in the stencil table we can create the patterns here uh, and there's all the patterns on the left hand side part builder we put the the pattern we put the material it kicks out the parts uh, and the tool station allows you to fit everything together the tinkers construct will allow me specifically to get as far as stone tools before needing a um, a tool forge so uh, we wouldn't be able to go ahead and start making things like iron tools yet uh, until a little bit later on but anyway let's have a look at what we get for this quest wow! three more hoppers well we indeed yes we do like hoppers um so uh, yeah good good to have three hoppers there um we're going to need them later no doubt slap them away for now we'll move on to the next quest which is uh, collect a string from silkworms uh, we're definitely not going to be able to make a tool forge just yet as that requires quite a lot of big parts but yeah silkworm string um and this is a really interesting dynamic of um, modded Minecraft. Sorry, we'll just spend a second looking at the tool forge of what we need. So we need um, blocks of iron. For some reason, I'm looking at the first one in the list there. But uh, yeah, if we had blocks of iron as well as some uh, seared bricks. And uh, I think it's yeah, it's a, a crafting table underneath that allows us to make the tool station there. And inside the tool station, we'll be able to make iron tools and above um, using the Tinker's Construct mod. Um, that being said, though, we're also going to require a smelter to be able to produce those individual parts. So unlike with the Tinker station, 
and the part builder where you can do that for wood and you can do that for stone in order to make the parts later on down the road I'm going to need to be able to smelt these items using the smelter and into a crafting uh, sorry into a uh, what do they call it it's a it's a kind of a smelting table um, you place like a pattern imprint or an impression you know in the table you you drop the the liquid metal out it fits into that kind of impression it sets in place and from there you get like the head of a pick or you get the the, the handle for the tool itself or the binding piece you know so you will get to see that a little bit later on uh, but break leaves with a crook to collect silkworms you can plant them on leaves they will infest them and spread eventually they'll turn white and then from there we'll be able to smack them about and get the string out of them so i am just going to hit hit this down with my crook um, try and get some of those silkworms that we talked about there's one worm drop there so we've got the worm I, I, like I say, I really enjoy how this little mechanism here works. It's a great way of getting string and a great way of getting a, a bunch of string as well. You don't need to be out, you know, farming spiders when you've got this mod installed, let me tell you. All you need is one good tree, one good worm, and a little bit of time. And um, in just a few moments, you'll see exactly what we'll be able to do with this. Hello, Pet Rock. Uh, let me just spin around the room here. We'll take this tree down at uh, its midsection. Why not? <laughs> Bash it out. That's the third log, fourth log. Smickety smack. Smickety smack, don't stop the smack smack. Oh, six in this one. It's a nice long tree, this, this, this one here. Um, that will auto degrade for us. Uh, we'll chuck a, another sapling down. We will twerk, twerk, twerk it out. Get ourselves another tree. And now what we'll do is we'll take this happy little worm. That's in our inventory here. No, we won't. We'll smack it, smack it down again first just to get a few more items out of it before we uh, send the worm into its new little place of, uh, of, of, of living. Uh, we've got another worm there. Nice little drop of another worm. So two of those. We've got an apple, which is always good. Going to need the food in this game, especially in the beginning, to keep us sustained as we work, work, work it out. Keep on smacking. Yeah, the crook is almost, um, almost halfway depleted, but... Uh, there we go. Nicely um, deconstructed there for us. Let's take the logs down. So we've just made ourselves a couple of quick trees. We've got four silkworms. We've got 15 saplings. And we walk away with another. What's that? Eight. Eight wood. Oh, there was a couple more there as well. And another silkworm. So we've got five silkworms, 10 wood logs, 14 saplings. So Sorry, excuse me. 14 saplings. And here we go. Now, if we take the silkworm and we ferry it into the tree like so and watch. And I've just sped this up just so that you can see it happening. Um, also, guys, let's not forget to like the video. Um, get us to 50 likes if we can and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. That allows my channel to grow and allows me to make some wonderful content for you as well. Um, so as mentioned here, now the tree is fully white. We can slip slap it with the old crook and we are getting string for days. If we want to make beds, wool, if we want to uh, make bows, you know, whatever we want to do, we are now we are now rolling in string, basically. So it's a great way of making, a, you know, an infinite source of string as long as you've got saplings to do it. So I just bash all of these strings out with the crook. And that should finalize this mission. And uh, we'll be able to check to see what glorious, glorious quest prize we get for this one. There we go, 64. That's the whole stack of string from this one tree alone. Like I say, the dividend back, you know, using the silkworm technique is absolutely fantastic. Also, fun fact, if you're a pinched for food and you've got uh, a nice amount of silkworms, you can put them through the furnace and they act as a form of food as well. So um, you can eat your fellow silkworm if you're desperate.
No eating rotten flesh for you if you don't need to. Let's twerk another tree up. I always like to leave a tree in the middle of the, of the area there just so that we've got that life with us. We've got our pet rock. We've got our tree in the middle. Um, we managed to get a plump pear. We also managed to get a plump peach. So yeah, just over a stack of string. Um, a stack and six by the looks of things. Um, so to complete the quest off, we need to have um, our string, I think, and our silkworm in our inventory. Um, but just before we do that, let's just make eight cobblestones real quick. We'll make another... Let's make another chest. Um, we're going to run out of space eventually in this one. So let's put another chest together like so. And we will drop this chest down next to this one. So we can make a nice big super chest. Baboom. And we'll put our torch light down here. And light up the room a bit more from the center. So there we go. Um, pop our stuff that we don't need back up into the chest. We'll grab the silkworms, like I said. We'll also grab the strings, like I said. We'll finish this quest off. And we'll see what we see. So Silk Road is now complete. We'll hit the random reward button. Wow! And we've got ourselves four water mills. Now that is really good. That is really, really, really good. What is a water mill? Uh, gives GP for adjacent flowing water blocks. The higher the level, the more GP. Sourceful water blocks do not count. Um, so core power given for GP. Um, yeah, so basically you can use that to, to flow water through it and generate power. And that power then becomes an infinite power source for some of your um, your crafting later on down the road, which is naturally going to need you know some some power source behind it. Cool, so uh, moving on to our next quest, and I think we'll kind of call it after this one. Enter the mining uh, dimension. So the overworld has no ores. It's, main, it's entirely made of stone. It's only way to find ores is to dig your way up to the top of the overworld and be teleported to the mining dimension. That is full of ores. You know, C-J-E-I to find all of the Y levels um, to navigate to there. So, yeah, we're going to need to climb up, up, up the ziggurat. Um, enough blocks... And then eventually it will take us to the mining dimension. So in order to get ourselves up to the mining dimension, I think we're going to need to get ourselves a number of decent tools to help the job along. So let us start by making ourselves some sticks as handles uh, for our tools. We're going to need these certainly. Um, we're also going to need some patterns as well. So that we can we can you know we can create the parts. Uh, so we'll go over now to our stencil table and we'll pop a pattern in the first slot there. And let's begin by making a hammer. We need a hammerhead. We need a binding um, part, and we also need the handle as well. So uh, starting off then with the binding pattern, we'll need one of those. We're going to need a tool rod to act as the handle. And then we're going to need the hammer head as well. So now we've got those three items. Let's take the pattern out. Let's move it over to this part here. And we will start by making the... No, we won't. We'll go and get ourselves some stone first. That would be really useful. Luckily for us, we managed to hoard ourselves uh, a number of stacks of pebbles. So we'll grab a couple of stacks of those. And let's make ourselves some cobble. So those will make 16. Adding those on top will give us a little bit more. Uh, let's do that again. It's another eight on top and another four on top of that. So 26 cobblestones. That should get us through the creation of these items. Uh, so back, back, back we go to the part builder. Cool, so we take our binding pattern into the first slot. We take our cobblestone, we put it into the block slot there. And from that, we get our stone binding in preparation for making the part. We'll then put our tool um, rod in. We'll take the tool rod out that's been created. Then we'll add our hammerhead in. And there we go. That's the three essential parts that we need to build the hammer. So then we go over to the tool station, click the button there for the hammer stick the uh, the items in this in the respective slots and hey presto we got ourselves a stone sledgehammer crash your blocks like your enemies as it says there in the blurb 
stone sledgehammer. So yeah, with this stone sledgehammer, we don't need to be bashing the uh, the stones out of the walls with just our fists, and we can get straight cobblestone uh, from doing this as well. So um, yeah, nifty little little tool there. And like I say, that really gives you a good explanation of how the Tinker's Construct works. As you've made the three items, put them together, and you get the tool out at the end. And then one of the other wonderful things about the tools themselves, and not really the fact that they break really easily, because obviously the better the tool, the, the more durability that they have. But instead of it breaking the tool completely, and then you have to go and make another one, I can just repair these tools. So I can take it back to the... Um, to the tool uh, station and using the, the stone material which we've used to make the tool uh, I can just fix it uh, and it's a great way of um, fixing my tools as you can see there I've just broken this one so I pop that in the center slot there we put our materials there in the top and there you go I'm just uh, fixed my sledgehammer it also gets a little bit of XP you know so I've used it enough to get 16 XP out of 500 after that it will level up the tool and I'll be able to use it longer and uh, it becomes a more useful tool for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a staircase up because to get to the mining dimension we're going to need to climb, climb, climb until we've climbed enough and after that we will be um, kind of changing biomes if you like into a place where we will finally, finally, finally find all the juicy ores that we're going to need to play this game. Um, and you're going to see a lot of back and forth between obviously the staircase that I'm making, the, the, the part builders, the tool the tool forges, not the tool forges, sorry, the, the tool stations as I continue to to abuse my my tools and break them and need to fix them and so on and so forth. Uh, I think we're also going to need to get ourselves a handful of uh, torches as well to light up our work but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a spiral staircase up um, around the circumference of this kind of workspace at the moment um, so that when we when we go up and down to the mining dimension and back we're basically traveling up a nice staircase and uh, maybe we'll put in some stone stairs to make that journey just a little bit better for us as well all right so we're back here again let's let's remove the stuff we don't need to be walking around with and uh, like I said, I think we're going to need to start making ourselves some uh, some torches. So just shuffle a few things around. We've got some cobblestone here. Um, but also might be a nice idea as well is to make some more independent tools as well. So if we make ourselves a um, an axe, a pick, and a shovel, that's going to come in good stead for us in the future. So what we'll do here is we'll make ourselves a standard pickaxe. We just need the pick head, we need the tool rod, we need the binding pattern. And uh, from that, we'll be able to make ourselves a pickaxe. Precise mining tool, effective on stone and ores. So that's going to come in handy later on when we start finding ores. So uh, let's build those parts out now. So we've got the, stool, uh, the, the tool, what am I saying, the stone rod the pick head as well as the binding um, material as well so they're the three items we need to make the pick just chuck these back up into the stencil chest there for later use and we put in our little components into the slots like we did with the stone hammer and hey presto we have ourselves we have ourselves take that cobblestone out there we go we have ourselves a pick that's our second tool made using Tinker's Construct. We get the advancement, getting an upgrade. Again, we'll leave some cobblestone in there for fixing our tools as we go. But yeah, now we've got the pick. We'll be able to do more precise mining, basically, as it says. Let's make ourselves a furnace. Like I said, we're going to need some torches. So I think what we'll do now is we will burn ourselves some wood um, to allow us to get the charcoal that we need to make a few extra torches. We'll stick that there. We'll stick that torch back down there. We've been mining ourselves a decent amount of, uh, or farming ourselves a decent amount of wood already. So we'll take these, these 15 logs here and we will chuck them straight in half and half 
to make ourselves what we need. And just as that's processing there, I think what we'll do is we'll make ourselves an ax and we'll just replace the wood that we've just taken and um, ax ourselves up, uh, you know, our, our own wood. So make an ax head, we've got the binding tool, we've got the tool rod pattern already. We now know what we're doing. Easy peasy, stool, to, stool, stone tool rod, stone ax head, and the binding pattern, or the, or the stone binding rather. Put the three together, and what do you get? We got ourselves an ax. Easy peasy. And like I say, every time these things break after use, we just fix them rather than recreate them. So I think it's like one or two cobblestone, you know, to fix the tool that you've broken, really. So here we go. What we can do is we can axe out and work a little bit faster. No need to be punching logs anymore now that we're tinkering. Um, quick degrade all of the leaves. We've got an apple out of that one. Twerk ourselves another tree. Let's replace these 15 logs. up to nine eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen got a few saplings out of that got another apple out of that so nine saplings extra um, worth doing just as we waited for those logs to, to turn into charcoal basically oh there's another sapling there as well so we'll chuck these up so we are keeping a decent stockpile of 22 saplings in there, six birch ones and others. We've got seven charcoals here. Let's split those off and finish these up a little bit as well. Split those off again, finish that up with these logs here. And obviously some sticks. We can, uh, oh actually, this, another good way of doing this is making it with stone tools as well. So you can make stone sticks and add the charcoal onto that like you would do a standard wooden torch. And uh, we get stone torches instead, which apparently give off just that smidge a little bit more light, I believe. Um, so it's a nice little little tricksy there. There's an extra charcoal there. Uh, we'll just make one more set of four. Why not? We're going to need them all. And then we'll save those stone rods for the future. Um, let's now put up our four. Our four. Let's put up our stone... Um, torches around the room give ourselves a bit more light to work with and then the rest we'll use for our climbing into the into the mining dimension hopefully we've got enough we've got 30 something to get us going oh can jump high enough that time there we go uh, so we've got two there let's stick one up here gonna need to jump jump there we go and we're gonna need one up on this corner spot as well my OCD is happy We've got light in every corner of our little little cave room here. Gonna need to jump, jump, jump again. Get it up there. Come on. There it is. There it goes. There we go. Fantastic. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to uh, continue to build up to the mining dimension. I will save you the burden of having to watch every small detailed step I take in doing this. And I will um, increase the speed of the video. So um, we will uh, be back in the game in just a few seconds. But uh, just as we do that, I've got a couple of bits of information I wanted to deliver to you around Feed the Beast. What is Feed the Beast? Feed the Beast is a, a group of people that specialize in making high quality mod packs for maps for Minecraft. We started out as a custom challenge map in Minecraft that made heavy use of multiple text mods, they say. Uh, it played very similarly to a type of map known as Skyblock, where a player starts in a void world with only a small platform and must overcome a series of challenges. Become Feed the Beast includes tech mods. It's possible to use the various custom blocks and items to keep track of the challenges and the player's progress, as well as automatically giving awards for each challenge that we met. 
The map was then adapted to allow multiple players to compete against each other in a race to complete the objectives. This version gained large popularity after being live streamed on Twitch TV with Direwolf20 versus Nearby Gamer, both very well known users of the mods included in the map. As the map was released to the public, it became apparent it was very difficult to distribute the map file, mods and configuration settings to those interested in playing it. At some point a decision was made to combine all the mods into an easily distributable pack as well as create a launcher that would streamline installation. These maps would become extremely popular and in order to allow more people to access the maps, the FTB launcher was released. So as you've seen when I when I play this game, Feed the Beast is what effectively hosts stone block it compiles all 260 mods together in an easily installable patch and um, yeah it's very straightforward for me to run this uh, on my computer um, the other thing that um, feed the beast have said and i've taken this directly from their um, kind of their forum their information source at the moment um, over the last 10 years, the Feed the Beast team have released close to 100 mods, mod packs, and maps. One of our most popular mod packs was the classic FTB Ultimate for 1.4.7. With the perfect blend of tech and magic, FTB Ultimate provided millions of players the opportunity to play either solo or with friends and explore new worlds and dimensions as well as build massive bases filled with technological and magical constructs. As part of our 10th anniversary celebrations, we wanted to release a re-imaging of this mod pack that combines some of the best mods from the 1.4.7 era along with some incredible new modern classics. So FTB Ultimate Anniversary Edition includes some of the very best mods uh, to provide that perfect balance of tech, magic and exploration, whether you want to build a massive tech-based factory or explore the world looking for powerful magical artifacts, FTB Ultimate provides something for everyone. Um, now you can find the anniversary edition from www.feedthebeast um, or feed-the-beast.com forward slash app. I'll put that in the comments at the bottom if you guys want to learn more about it. So coming back to our kind of time lapse here, uh, we are still building our way up. We are up to Y level I think it's 220 something at the moment. Um, to get to the mining dimension, we need to be at Y level um, 250. Um, so what I'm just doing here is I'm just making myself uh, some Tinker's items to take with us so that when we go to the mining dimension, as you can see here, it's just kind of popped us over and we're back to kind of normal speed for a second. Um, we are now seeing ores. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend up the rest of this video just bashing out a few necessary ores to keep us going. Here is some iron iron ore here that's going to come in use for obviously moving up from stone to iron. We're getting certus quartz. We found some lapis lazuli, lazuli, however you want to pronounce it. Um, let's make another furnace here so we can do a little bit of work as we go. And we're going to be frequenting back and forth the mining dimension Um as our requirements need us to. Um, we'll find everything up here from diamond to redstone, etc., etc., etc. There is another quest later on for us to travel to the end, but that's going to happen in a later episode. Uh, but I think we've established ourselves really, really well in today's episode specifically. What have we been able to do? We've got ourselves string by using the whole glow, the glow worm, the silkworm kind of process. We've made the tinkers construct tables and we've made a second set for the mining dimension. We've made ourselves a set of tools, um, a pick, an ax, a sledgehammer as well, uh, or actually just those three to start with. And then we've gone and built, uh, and that's taken a good two hours for me to do that, the stairwell up to the mining dimension. You're probably thinking you could have done that quicker star 17 just by building a straight up and putting ladders behind it. I do agree with that, um, but it's fun running up and down the stairs. I, li I like that. Cool, so let's finish off this quest then. Let's see what we get as our random reward. Bruh. Oh, everybody's favorite water candle. So we've got a couple of these now. Um, I'll stow it in the box for later. So yeah, the end, but not likely to reach the end. Mine to the top of the mining dimension. The end, like the other dimensions, are almost completely something i couldn't read the rest of that but um yeah we'll, we'll we'll discover that one later on as we go let's add a little bit of light up here to stop all the mobs from spawning in because that essentially is a reality now as we're making more space 
um, we need to make sure that we are lighting up our areas um, back down we go back down to base level back where we started back to home I think I'll call it because it is our home um, which I'm hoping to expand upon in every episode and we'll grow this game as we go as we work through the quest book specifically and try and complete as many of these quests as we possibly can but um, there we go we go from Y level 250 all the way down the apples and pears uh, to base level doobity do I've added the, the staircases in there with, with the stone steps just to make that kind of journey just that little bit better. I might knock out some of these top blocks as well just to make it a bit quicker for next time as well. Um, but uh, yeah, using less energy as possible to get up and down these stairs from the mining dimension and back to our little home spot. There's our tree sitting pretty in the middle and there's our pet rock there. Uh, something I wanted to introduce for this episode is the Wowser Wall. So uh, along our staircase, I'm going to be adding the name of a YouTube subscriber or somebody from the comments thread in every episode. Everybody say hello to Clue. Clue is uh, another YouTuber, makes some incredible, incredible content. I will add the link to his channel in the, um, in the comment section. And I think that's going to call us for today. Guys, thank you so much. See you on the next episode. We're Star17 Gaming. We'd love to see you again. 50 likes, if you can. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people. Welcome. Welcome back to episode three of Stoneblock, Feed the Beast Stoneblock, with me, Star17 Gaming. It's great to have you back, and we are really looking forward to taking you through uh, the next installment of our adventure. Uh, as we left off last time around, uh, we completed up just um, with the last few quests there. We got ourselves to the mining dimension, so we're now able to grab wonderful ores from on high. Looking at a couple of the quests that I'm looking to achieve today, make a sieve. Uh, is first of all uh, so we're going to look to make a sieve with the sieve we'll be able to obviously finally dust out some uh, some gravel and some sand and, and get some materials from it then we're looking at making an oak crucible we've got to then make some clay uh, some of the basic principles to work towards uh, the smelter in just a few moments making a crucible there is is essential for making lava so that's definitely one thing that we're going to need to be able to do today and then uh, construct a smeltery. Now this is um, a really cool part of uh, Tinker's Construct. So uh, we will be making a smelter and finishing off this episode today with a tool forge. We've got about two and a half hours worth of content which I have refined down into 30 minutes or so. So let's get started. So first of all, what do we need to make a sieve? Well, we're gonna need uh, some planks. We're gonna need a slab. We're gonna need a couple of sticks. Um, so looking at our little tree here in the middle, let's start smacking it down and getting ourselves the materials needed to complete that quest there. Uh, so we're going to just try and make as much wood as we can to go ahead and make the sieve. Guys, looking back at the previous two videos so far, um, thank you so much for all your comments and all your interest. I'm having a great time um, running through this Let's Play. Um, one thing I learned from watching other streamers is there's this wonderful, wonderful uh, tip here about uh, excavating. Um, so if you were to go into the controls, type into the search box ex ex excavate, that's the word I'm looking for, um, you'll be able to, using the right tool, take down all of uh, the in this case the leaves from a tree using a crook or if I'm using an axe against the, the trunk take down all of the, the, the ores from it in uh, one go although it's going to do all of the labor onto that tool that you would do through individual kind of mining so be prepared to fix your tools every five seconds uh, but it's a great time saving mechanism from uh, making the um, the arduous task essentially of mining 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 farming 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 cool so um now it's about time we upgraded our basic crook to a you know a, a tinker's construct crook 
So we're going to need a bunch of these stone tool rods, four of them to be precise, whack them into the format here from the tool station. And what do you know, we've got ourselves a stone crook, uh, which we'll be able to repair every time instead of having to make one every time. So as you can see here, using the excavate function, I'm getting all of the saplings um, from them that's available in one swoop, as well as all of the, 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 the trunk, the, uh, the, the, the wooden logs there as well. So now we've got enough materials, we'll be able to make the sieve. So we just make some slabs. We are gonna need a slab in the center. We're gonna need our planks. Either side and a couple of sticks as legs at the bottom and hey presto we have ourselves a sieve. Uh, to finish off this we're going to go back to our chest where we kept all our strings from the last episode and we're going to make ourselves a string mesh uh, to go into the sieve. And as you can imagine when you throw sand, dust, gravel through the sieve itself you're collecting and catching all of the little ores that are effectively inside the, 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 the block itself. So it's a great way of getting things like bone meal. It's a great way of getting uh, other ores as well, like iron um, particles or, or gold particles and things like that. And it's a great early way of getting kind of the materials you need for later on in the game. Um, that combined with the mining dimension, we've got a great resource uh, for all of that stuff. Cool, so now that we finish that quest, we can click the button on our reward and let's see what we get. This is cool, a torch launcher. Um, says and does exactly what it says on the tin. It launches torches like a gun. So let's say I wanna pop a torch up here, boom. We just launch it straight from the machine there. Another one next to it. And then obviously to reload the machine or to fill it back up with torches, you just collect a torch and it goes back into its inventory. So um, yeah, great, great fun little way of placing torches basically using a, a gun system. All right, moving on to the next quest then, oak crucible. Wooden crucibles are used to transform plant into water. So this is definitely gonna be necessary for us. We don't have any water around. We're not outside. We've got no luxury of filling up units of rain. So we've gotta make uh, a crucible ourselves throw in some saplings, jump up and down on them. That's how I imagine this works. And hey, presto, you've managed to smash out enough liquid to eventually fill a container, uh, which then you can scoop out with a bucket. So we've got our crucible here. Uh, let's make a little spot for it. Uh, we are running out of space here now with the tree in the middle and all of our tool making kind of functions around the, the, the front side there. Let's, let's give ourselves a bit of space because eventually we're going to need to create ourselves an infinite water pool. Um, so I think we'll just knock out some of these stone blocks here in a great spot to you know carry on our our homestead and um, renovate you know where we're working as we go transform it as we go so we put our crucible there and like I said if we grab a bunch of these saplings fill it to the top takes about eight of them in total to fill it to the top um, the sapling itself will kind of decompose into the crucible and then, and then reform itself into water. So we'll just leave that to do what it needs to do for now. Uh, we're gonna need a bucket at some point, so we use the iron that we do have that we got from the mining dimension in the last episode to make a bucket for ourselves. But yeah, eventually that's gonna turn itself into water and we'll start to have water available to us. Let's just extend this out a little bit. Like I said, I wanna be able to have an infinite water pool. Um, so a nice four by four design here in the ground. I think we'll keep some water there so that we're not constantly using our saplings to make more and more water is a wise decision. And why not let's extend this out just a little bit here to give ourselves that little bit more workspace as well. Um, like I say, by the end of this episode, we're looking to make the smelter. So we're def definitely gonna need a big space available to, to do that as well. So uh, I'll just spend a couple of minutes here bashing out these blocks and um, like I say, creating ourselves a bit more workspace. to go 
There we go, we've made one pool of water, or one, one bucket worth of water. So we'll just do this one more time, another eight saplings, and um, we can place that in our little water trough there. And we'll finish this quest, let's see what we get. Oh my gosh, 12 epic bacons, and look at the color scheme of those bacons. They do look epic, don't they? Look at that. I would, I would love to taste that bacon to see what it tastes like. I've got the uh, the impression it's kind of part bacon, part candy. And, uh, what a delight that would be. Let's keep that somewhere for safekeeping for later. And um, we, we can eat other food up until then. There's our infinite water pool. Cool. So that's that finished up now. So we can move on to the next thing that we need to do, uh, which is to make some clay. Uh, so what we're going to need to do to do that is we're going to need to place down some cobblestone blocks here. And using our hammer and our new excavate function that we've kind of added in, we'll be able to turn this cobblestone into gravel. If we then place the gravel down, in a similar fashion and excavate it, we'll turn the uh, gravel into dirt. Uh, if we repeat that process again, we'll turn that dirt into sand. If we repeat that process again, we will turn that sand into dust. And if you place dust into the, um, I think it's into the crucible, the oak crucible we've just made, and add water that will make a block of clay so as i said now now that we've got the gravel now that we've got the dirt we will put the dirt down like so we'll fill out the room as best as we can and we'll do a mega excavate in just a moment bear in mind when doing this excavate tactic yet one it really depletes the health of the um, of the tool that you're using so it's best to be able to use tools that you can fix often as opposed to ones that break after usage also if you end up um, doing the excavate function and there's just not enough health left in the tool itself um, what it does is it gives you back what you weren't able to transform so you'll end up having to do the job a second time there uh, so it's definitely best to use a um, a more energetic tool as you can see there i've made another iron hammer and if i excavate now we're getting all of that sand it does leave a little bit behind sometimes um, but as you can see there, it took a, a reasonable amount of health out of the tool itself. I'll use my old tool just to finish these ones up. That broke that one. We got a couple of bits back, but um, now we can process the sand into dust. Same process again. One thing I've done for today's video is I've tried my best to cut out as much of the waffle as possible so that you're not seeing rep repetition and me doing a similar thing or the same thing over and over again. But believe you me, um, in the two and a half hours I was playing this, um, this, this, this episode in total, I processed an incredible amount of sand, I could process an incredible amount of gravel, I process an, an unimaginable amount of dust as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just saving you guys the burden of having to seal that. There we go, we just smashed all of that in one nice helping. And uh, we've managed to get ourselves a decent couple of stacks of uh, dust to get us started. So 52 plus 64, so just under two stacks there. What we'll do is we'll take, um, and I've got 64, 64, 64 ready for making grout, which is one of the, the principal components for the smelter in just a few moments. So we'll take some dust, as I said, place it in this crucible here, that turns that into clay, and we've just completed the quest for clay. Uh, what I end up doing now, because we're going to need that clay for the grout, is I'm going to process an entire stack of dust super quickly. So we'll turn it up to super fast mode. And we'll process all of this, this, this dust into clay, and that's going to give us a really good opportunity to get started on the next quest in just a few moments as well.
you know, I find this to be the best method. Stick the crucible right next to an infinite, infinite water source, bucket water, add dust, take clay, rinse, repeat 64 times. You get a stack. Let's see what we get for our reward. Bruh. We've got ourselves an exchanging gadget whatever an exchanging gadget is anyway moving on make a crucible the crucible is used i didn't get to read that quick enough but basically the the, the crucible itself uh, to make an unfired crucible you'll need that clay that we just created mixed with bone meal to make porcelain uh, once you have enough pieces of porcelain um, and what i'll do here is i'll upgrade the mesh on my sieve and i'll start putting i think it's um sand through the um through the mesh there uh, you'll be able to get bone meal and then with that bone meal i'll be able to add that to the clay make porcelain make a unfired uh, crucible and then that will be able to withstand the temperatures required to take a piece of cobblestone and turn it into lava that's that's the principal um you know act behind what we're doing there really so we'll just pop up to the mining dimension as well see if we can grab ourselves some iron some bone meal whatever we can get our hands on um, so i'm just going to turn up the speed for a few minutes whilst i mine out this area a little bit and rest assured we've got some action coming up for you in a second it's a great opportunity for us to talk about uh, the video itself again looking to achieve 50 likes if possible and also guys if you haven't done so already just click the subscribe button on the video itself um, show me that you love me or don't you know it's entirely up to you at the end of the day but if you're excited to see when the next episode is out um, while I try to stay close to rolling out a video every Monday Obviously, if you're a subscriber, you'll get a notification letting you know when the next video is available. And um, you'll be able to keep in touch with the series. And uh, again, yeah, I'd love to be able to interact with you guys. Let me know how we're doing. If you're enjoying the show, if there's anything you'd like to see. Again, if you want to be part of the Wowza Wall, um, leave a comment, subscribe. I'll, I'll get round to adding as many of you guys onto there as we go. Uh, just slow down time a second because I've been hearing some creepy crawlies in the background. And as I can see, there's a creeper. So let's dispatch of him. See what we can um, see what we can get from him. It's the first mod we've encountered mob we've encountered so far. So um, our first kill, you know, in Minecraft itself. Let's see if we can squeeze into there a little bit. Give him a slash with the axe. Baboon. He's not gonna pop. There we go. Oh, we got a loot chest as well. And Inferium. That's really cool. Let's have a look what's inside this here loot crate um that'd be fun to see what that that creeper was sitting on basically uh some food and a cactus green chicken egg i really 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 do hope that means that there's a cactus green chicken in there um but uh yeah i don't want to just throw that willy-nilly and 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 see it turn to pulp on the ground so We'll save that one for later, I think. And uh, yeah, these apples are going to come in handy as I uh, as I need to replenish a little bit of my health anyway, or my, my food rather. Uh, I can see there's a skelly in there. Oh, baby skeleton! These little things are agile as heck. Think the baby zombies, but with a bow and arrow. And I believe, yeah, we've got our first death of the season so far. So strike that down as death number one. I imagine this will be one of many that we'll encounter through this game. Um, but we'll get back to where we were in just a second and get our stuff back. But just before we do, we need to get rid of this spider. Also get rid of this baby skeleton down here. And try, try, try again. This time with, uh, with more intelligence this time around. Uh, so we'll just grab our gear back. So I had all of my tools in there, my quest books and things. And let's see... Um, Let's see if we can take out this skeleton as well. See, it's fine when they're adult and not babies because they can't get through to fight us. And we can just kill them at a distance here. Let's chomp down on a couple of these apples here. Try and get some of my energy back. 
pop a uh, torch there to stop the mobs from kind of auto spawning into the dark spots. Um, quite interesting, I didn't realise in the mining dimension they had these kind of open recesses here. For, for oh, we got another baby skeleton coming in! Time to fight again, everybody. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's a crack shot with that bow and arrow. And, yep, there we go. Second death of the season in the same episode. So that's two deaths today. Let's get back to where we were. There's our baby skeleton. Let's take him down now. He doesn't suspect us to, to, re, to re, uh, re, re, repopulate ourselves next to him. We got revenge on the old baby skeleton there. Let's grab our gear back. And I think maybe, maybe, maybe we need to come back for fighting later when we've got a bit of armor and made a bit more progress in the game, I think. But um, yeah, for now, let's just um, put a hole, put a lid on that hole, basically. And we'll leave those bad guys well alone. And uh, just as I was kind of thinking about leaving the mining dimension, uh, I came across some iron um, just in the uh, in the ceiling there. So really good opportunity to grab ourselves six beautiful bits of iron. That's going to be necessary for us to turn the flint mesh into iron mesh. And that's just going to make all of our sifting a lot more bountiful uh, for ores and for materials and bone meal and things like that. We have six bone meal as well. We got that from a couple of the bones that we got from killing the, the skeletons there. So uh, I think a little bit more bone meal and we've got enough to make the uh, the porcelain clay needed to make the unfired um, crucible. So sloppy, but mission complete. We'll make our way back down the stairs. A little wave to clue on our way through. And it's a great thing I'm going to do with the um, with the dropped skulls and the dropped heads here, is I'm going to add these to the Wowser Wall, and I think that will make a nice little touch uh, to everybody's uh, name placards just underneath. So we'll have the skeleton there under clue. We'll add another in later on um, when we have the the next person join in. So I've made the the crucible down here. I am now. Um, looking to create the uh, smeltery. So we're gonna need all of these components here, controller, drain, tank, faucet, seared bricks, and a casting table. Um, although I'm gonna be making this a lot bigger because I like really big smelteries. So in order to kind of make a lot of these parts here, I'm gonna need 64 of each to make two stacks of grout. I then have to put the grout through the furnace to make bricks, seared bricks basically. And we're going to need an absolute ton of seared bricks to be able to, to finish the smeltery in its entirety. To finish the quest, we need less. But in the meantime, whilst we're waiting for the grout to, to turn itself into um, seared bricks, let's make a really, really cool area you know, for our smeltery to go. We'll try and build it into the wall so it's like prefabricated into the wall under the stairs of our little mining area, our little base area here. Um, so I'm just going to speed up time and bash the heck out of this wall uh, until we've made a nice little spot for it, basically. Okay, stick our grout in there to create the seared bricks. Just sizing it up a little bit. We're going to need to... I'm thinking about making a 5x5 five five smelter. Um, again, the bigger the better, the more you can do later, basically. So. I'm going to want to go enough blocks back and enough blocks left to right to be able to fit the 5x5 five five shape. Um, at the moment we've got this at 5, but we're probably going to need to take it out an extra spot as well because um, if your base plate is 5x5 five five in, a, in a grid section, you're then going to need another one on top to build the walls of the smeltery itself. Yeah, As you can see here, we, we're taking our cobblestone, we're putting it in here, we can now take the lava out, save that for later. Uh, or actually, no, what we can do is we can put the lava down underneath the crucible, and that means it's gonna speed up our, our lava production by three, um, much faster than what the torch was doing. So yeah, basically we'll do that, and um, we'll make ourselves a bunch more lava, um, which is gonna be necessary for the smeltery later on as well. So saving us a job for later. So five bits of cobblestone in there, we'll make one bucket's worth of lava. As you can see, we've got some seared bricks now, um, but we'll continue just smashing out this area here just to fit in the uh, the smelter. So one, two, three, four, five from left to right. 
six, actually six. We need to make it a seventh so that it can fit in. Um, you'll see exactly what I mean in a few moments when we start placing the, the, the pieces in, into place. Um, but I think this is gonna look really cool um, built into the wall here. We'll just push it back by one more spot as well. Nice little, nice little kind of alcove there to, to house the, the smeltery, I think. Um, you begin to feel comfortable handling the stone sledgehammer. And that's another great thing about Tinker's Construct as well, especially this mod pack, is that you get experience when you're using your tools. Um, you can level them up, which means you can use them for longer. They break less, um, which is a cool little, little factor into it. So now we've got ourselves a decent stack of seared bricks. Let's see if we've got enough to finish the quest at least. Uh, by making the items we need to collect here. So we need to make the smeltery controller one of, a smeltery drain one of, one seared tank, which is gonna need a glass block in the center, which I already have made for the purposes of this vehicle, this vehicle, this video rather. Um, so seared tank, we need the, the glass in the center, we need bricks around the outside, like so. Ding dong, a bing bong, there we go, one seared tank. Um, we are going to need a seared control, or sm a smeltery drain, and a smeltery controller as well. So um, we'll just type in what the uh, the recipe is for the smeltery drain. So that's six blocks either side. So one of those fluid in and fluid out. Smeltery controller like that. And we're also going to need a faucet. And that's just the same as making a bucket. So one, two, and three. That makes like the tap, if you like, for, for the, the liquid metal to come out of. Uh, we need two seared bricks, so we'll take two of those. And then we need a casting table, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seared bricks in a table shape, basically. Quite straightforward there. So one, two, three, four, five, six in a table shape. That's that complete. Quest completed for smeltery. So we've got one more quest to do before we finished up everything I wanted to do in today's episode. Let's have a look at what we get. Wow, that's a decent prize. Two ender chests. Um, guys, uh, just out of interest, if you have played this before and you're watching me play it, um, let me know if I can place one ender chest in the mining dimension and the other ender chest down here, uh, because I think that would be really useful if I had a way to transport you know, my items without having to physically bring it back and forth. Um, so guys, yeah, let me know um, if that's something that you've, you've seen before and something that works. So I'm just going to construct the smeltery now. As I said, I'm going to do a 5x5 five five base, and then I'm going to have all of the, um, the taps kind of facing outwards. So as I'm working on it, um, I can just kind of release all of my liquid, liquid ores, you know, into, you know, an area which is right by me, basically. Um, so we've got the, the, the casting table on the far right there, and I think we'll make a couple of drains as well, so that if we're working big, uh, or rather smelting basins, if we're working big, we've got two of those that we can run at one time, plus the casting table. As you've done the first layer, you can start to make use of the, um, the smeltery, so I'll just continue to use the rest of my bricks up there. And then if you add cobblestone to the smeltery, you can turn those into, into um, seared bricks. And I'm just gonna finish off the smeltery with, um, you know, the cobblestone uh, into, into seared bricks, just like we're doing here. Um, we'll raise it up to, to three levels high, uh, and that kind of gives us a much, much, much bigger yield with the smeltery moving forward. 600 ingots I can now create at any one time with this smeltery. Um, also though, if I put some gold through it, I'll be able to make myself a impression here of an ingot, as you can see. Dang, we're gonna need one more gold to finish that one off. Yeah, gold or brass you can use to make the impressions, basically. So let's, 
sift our way through until we get some more gold. So I'm just going to process all of this uh, this here sand. It's, it's either sand or, or dust, one of the two. Um, put some gold through it. Finish off the ingot there so that later, and, and for all future sessions, um, I can process ingots into that impression there as well as blocks in the basins to the left. So we can now do two things. We can make ingots, we can make blocks. Now what I need to make the, the final thing, which is the tool forge, is I need uh, one, two, three, four blocks of iron. So that's a total of 27 individual iron ingots, as well as three seared bricks. And we're just going to need a standard crafting table and that will allow us to build the tool forge. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time um, sifting. And again, I've cut this video so that you haven't had to watch me sift forever. But I've been sifting sand. I've been sifting. Well, I've been turning cobblestone into gravel. I've been sifting cob gravel through the, uh, through, the, through the sieve there to be getting all of these little bits of ores. Four of those little bits of ores makes one... Um, you know, piece of ore that I can then put through the smeltery and then I get times two each ore piece every time. So, um, yeah, what I need is enough to be able to make the, uh, the the tool forge there. So I've just managed to make four blocks of iron and I get a few ingots spare as well for my labors today. There we go. So one two three across the top cast a tool station in the middle there so i said crafting table i meant car tool station the four blocks of iron there that makes the tool forge and i think what we'll do is we'll just pop this tool forge here down next to the smeltery in that nice little spare spot there and that finishes up the quest and as you can see here now i can cast all of the pieces needed um, to make Iron tools, iron weapons, gold weapons, gold tools, obsidian, you name it, we can do it. So Tinker's Construct allows us to do so much with that. Cool, so just finishing off the quest then. That'll be the last thing we do today for Master Tinkerer. Let's have a look at what we get for our reward. <coughs> That's very good. A redstone furnace. Uh, as we start to make power for ourselves, we'll be able to put that one in. But uh, just to finish up the video, then we're going to add in the next person to the Wowser Ball. So, Crazy Boy 2266. We're adding you, YT. We're going to add you on to the Wowser Ball. And um, you'll sit next to Clue there. We we'll use that spare head that I've got, uh, one of my heads from my deaths. And uh, there you go. We've got two on the Wowser Ball. So we'll add a third for next episode. So thank you guys for joining me today. Um, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed the episode. And uh, we'll be back next, next time, next week specifically, to carry on our adventures. Uh, thank you all for watching. Again, like, subscribe, tell your friends all about Star 17's gaming channel. And we'll hope to continue to bring you great content on a weekly basis. Thanks, guys. Have yourselves a great week. Take care. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody out there. This is Star 17 Gaming channel uh welcome back to stone block episode four uh, we have an exciting episode for you today and we are going to be hoping to achieve to be able to complete three essential things today improved tools such as an iron pick an iron sword and an iron hammer so let's get started with the episode today so we're going to go to the pattern chest we're going to pull out our pieces to be able to create the pick pick axe uh, in iron fashion. So we'll need the headpiece, we'll need the binding tool as well as the tool rod itself. So those three items combined, um, as you remember from one of our previous episodes as we were working with a tool set uh, of these tools, uh, we're going to make an iron version of it. Now we need to do that in our smeltery. So taking three individual stone pieces, we add that to the smeltery here 
and we pour gold, liquid gold over the top of them to create a cast. And with that cast, we'll then be able to put iron through the smelter and smelt ourselves the three individual pieces to make the iron pickaxe itself. If you don't have gold, you can do this with brass alloy as well. And to make brass alloy, you'll need to combine two components, copper and aluminium. So copper and aluminium together will make brass, should make brass. So what we'll do here is we'll take our cast for the ingot, place that down in the casting table there, get the aluminium, get the copper smelted together. As you can see, I've got two aluminium ingots already in there. Copper's just finishing up now. Uh, they combine together to make aluminium brass, molten aluminium brass, and that will act as a substitute if you are finding it difficult to get your hands on gold, or you don't have the tools to be able to get gold out of the out of the rock or whatever. But as you've seen from this game, sifting dirt, sifting gravel, sifting dust, to sifting sand, gold is not a problem. You get plenty of that stuff doing it through that method. All right, cool. So once you've got your um, your three pieces, this time we're using the aluminium uh, brass to, you know, to finish up the, the cast itself. But when you have all three pieces, you'll be able to go over to the right where we've got our tool forge and we'll be able to put the three items together and complete our tool. Another thing I want to be able to create today, as mentioned, is I want to be able to create a iron sword. Um, in the last episode, we came across some mobs. I'd like to be able to defend myself a little bit better than using standard stone uh, tools and stone weapons. So I'd like to have an iron weapon with me this time around for when we go back up to the mining dimension. In case we stumble across any baddies, we'll have something to look after ourselves with. So similar principles, we need a wide guard pattern. We need the sword blade itself, and then we'll also need a standard tool rod as the handle. And those three items combined allow us to create the sword. So as you can see here, we're at the part builder. We're getting the stone versions of them so that we can create casts in the smelter itself. And with the casts, as you can see here, pouring the liquid juice all over the top of it, we'll be able to make the cast for the, the three components to make the, the tool or the weapon itself. And um, like I say, with these particular tools on Tinker's Construct, if they break, we can fix them. We don't have to keep recreating them. We can just fix them. So that's the wide guard pattern. We've already got the cast for the stool, uh, for the stool, for the tool handle the, the rod itself so we don't need to make another one of these i'll throw some iron into here next uh, and then with that we can we can pour the liquid iron over our newly made casts so that we have the pieces that we need to be able to make our tools there we go there's the sword blade there's the wide guard and the tool rod. And there we go, that's the three pieces we need for the sword. So over we go. We'll put the three items together and there's an iron broadsword right there with a uh, with a XP um, counter and everything. The more we use this sword, the stronger it becomes. Uh, maybe we'll have this sword for a while now if we don't move up to something different soon. So we're gonna pop up to the mining dimension now with our newly made pick and our newly made sword or did, did I make the pick? I don't know if I made the pick yet. Maybe I just made the sword for now. Um, and maybe we need to get some more iron to be able to complete the job. So let's pop up. Let's see our little friends here in the mob room. And let's do a little bit of exploring in here now that we've got a sword to see if we can find some more delights. I can already see some redstone there. There's some, some lead in the wall. Oh, what's this? A compressed zombie. Okay, let's lure that compressed zombie down. And we'll slash at his legs from there. Oh, and then, okay. Compressed zombie turns into multiple zombies. This is interesting. We've got a bit of a fight on our hands now. Uh, great job I made that sword, but they are... They are hitting me hard. They're hitting me deep. This one's got goggly eyes. Let's try the old retreat and attack method. 
I'm literally just spamming the attack button. I'm pretty sure there's a better way to fight these guys by taking more staged approaches. But I'm panicking, and uh, there's so many of them. We suffer a death. Let's respawn and try again. There's our friends, the zombies, all clustered together. I think what we'll do this time is we'll use this little arrangement of tables and, and, and storage to funnel them around and create a little bit of distance between me and them. Uh, also kind of double back round past this redstone as well, slashing at them as we go. Okay, one. Two. I love how they just disintegrate like that. This is getting pretty tense. Guys, it's that time of the episode that I must remind you to click that like button. And also, if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button. It helps towards building my channel, helping me grow. And uh, yeah, I've got plans to make lots and lots and lots of content for you in the future. There's another one down. There's another one down. Looks like we've got three left, two left. Goggly eyes and regular zombie. There goes goggly eyes and regular zombie left. Wow, that was exhilarating. We had a number of zombies there to fight. Uh, we got a bit of XP from that. We died once, but we survived. Oh, look, a spider. Let's dispatch up this here spider. He went down in a few hits that time. This iron sword is already oh, doing its job. We got, a, we got an enderman. We got an enderbender. Let's take him down. Swish at his knees from this little spot here. Obviously, they are unable to get through um, you know, gaps that are, are more, that are less than two blocks high. So it's a great opportunity just to slash his legs, take him down. But um, that's that enderman totally taken care of. What have we got going on here? We've got some diamond there. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll come back to it. But that's our first diamond sighting of the season. So fantastic to be able to see that. Let's grab some more of these, um, these blocks a second. And um, let's think strategically. Let's give ourselves an opportunity to defend a little bit better. If there's anything around that corner there, I'd like to be able to... There's a creeper there, as you can see. So I'd like to be able to kind of protect ourselves a little bit. But it looks like we can't work fast enough before he jumps over the fence. Let's get ourselves into a protected place. Where is he? There he is! And he popped. But he didn't kill us. He knocked out our torches. I'm okay with that. The diamond's fine. Let's finish blocking up this little section here. There we go. Stay out, bad guys. Okay, we can see some diamond. We can see some iron. There's plenty of redstone around. Um, we're in good stead now to, 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 to do the thing that we've come up here for, which is grabbing this iron. And with this iron, we'll be able to make the rest of the tools that we want to make this episode, the hammer and the pick itself. Because this stone pick doesn't last very long, as you've just seen there. It's broken. We've got to go and fix it. Dimensional shard ore. Okay, we'll come back to that as well. We've got yellow right, yellow right there on the right. That's a mouthful in itself. Um, yeah, plenty of things that we've unearthed in the in the previous episodes, but not actually kind of picked out yet because we don't have a strong enough tool for it. But we'll just finish up grabbing the rest of this here iron. Five, six, and seven, eight iron blocks there we can take with us. What's this? Certus Quartz Ore. I'm sure that will come in lots of handy later on. We're going to need that for something. Just bash out this here in case there's anything hanging around behind it. You can see some lapas around the corner there. Oh, there's some more iron there. But hang on a second. We've got a spider. Let's deal with this spider. Can he climb the wall? Yes, he can. There he is. One. Two, three, there's about three or four hits and he goes down. Uh, we've finished the quest. We've got some Inferium. So let's have a look at what we got from this. Excellent. Another Lexicon. Like we really needed that. We've already got two already. What we'll do here as well is we'll just see how deep this, um, this diamond deposit goes. See what we're looking at here. I think it's pretty much just these four blocks. 
uh, but it's good to have a good look here. What I'd like to be able to do eventually is upgrade the sieve with diamond so that we're getting the best possible yield out of all of our sieving. Um, so maybe that's what I'll save that for. If I have a look over here, we've got some yellow shimmering mushroom, some black shimmering mushroom. Uh, I think they'll come in handy a bit later on with some other things that we'd like to do with the game. Nothing for now, though. Um, let's have a look what else is over here. So, yeah, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time running back with you guys my exploration of this little cave area here because it's a cave system obviously there'll be some baddies around some mobs around some exposed ores all around so i wanted to be able to see what was available from here uh, a little bit more iron some more coal as you can see uh, i think that's silver we've just gone past there yes it is can't take that out with our stone tool so um yeah i think we've had a good look around a bit of gold there more iron nickel that's that iron there we're gonna need to grab that so uh, yeah I'm, I'm hoping by the time we leave this mining dimension on this little run here we'll have a number of ores to do what we need to do downstairs with the smelter so we've got 15 iron ore I think that's a decent yield remember everything you put through the smelter doubles so that will effectively count as 30 ingots out of the other side Okay, let's make our way back downstairs. It's a long way down, so I've sped it up just to save that little bit of time there. Trying to keep this episode to 30 minutes as best as we can. There's our pet rock as we speed on by. This was two hours of gameplay condensed into 30 minutes, so I have chopped some stuff out. There goes the wowser wall there. We've just passed it. Okay, so now we've got our... 17 sorry iron ore blocks we'll whack that in the smelter there that will cook and um, in the meantime we have ourselves some zombie flesh and with the zombie flesh there we can make some drying racks i know it sounds disgusting everybody but if we dry the stuff out it turns into a really good source of food something called monster jerky so what i'll do is i'll just line around the smelter here it's nice and warm here after all could act as a bit of a smoking device for us and uh, we'll take these here rotten fleshes and we'll just place them around the smelter to dry ourselves some monster jerky mm -mm, delicious all right so now we've got our iron melted let's finish off building the pick so we've got our three tool pieces the binding cast next here slap that down there makes a nice little crisscross and finally we'll need the pickaxe head to finish off the trifecta that is the pickaxe Already you'll notice a difference in its in the way it looks compared to a standard Minecraft pickaxe. So a nice, um, more kind of finished head to it. There we go. So we'll just create our pickaxe there. So we've now made the sword. We've made the axe. There's our monster jerky. Nom, nom, nom. This is going to give us a little bit of more substance, substance, sustenance that we have been getting from the apples up until this point. Uh, so yes, really, really happy to turn my vanquished foes, the zombies, into something useful. Now to make the hammer, we're going to need some different parts. So we're going to need these uh, face plates here. We're going to need a hammer head. And we're going to need a tough iron rod. Uh, so we just need one more of those um, large plates, iron large plates there. Two li iron large plates, a hammerhead, and a, um, a tough handle. And that's the materials we need for the iron hammer. So yes, we've been able to finish the major thing that we wanted to be able to accomplish today. Now also, guys, another thing you can do is you can combine a bit of diamond to your sword to give it a diamond edge to it. And that really, really improves the durability of your tools there. So I'll do the same with the pickaxe. I'll do the same with the hammer because I'm pretty sure we're going to be using these tools for quite a while. Also, another thing you can do, if you add redstone to your tool, I'm going to add it to the, to the hammer. You can increase the speed in which you are wielding the tool. 
Just popping down our ender head there. We'll use that one for later on uh, for the wowser wall itself. I think that'll be a nice addition for the next person that we'll add up there. And we'll just pop up these extra bits here for future episodes. Uh, that's the old Star 17 head there. This stonium here, if we, uh, if we feed this to our pet rock, we can tame it like a Pokemon. And um, finally, I might be able to get him to come off the stairs and actually come come hither to a place where he's not in the way, basically. So if I just feed him like that, uh, yeah, he tames himself to me. Just going to run back up to the mining dimension now that we've got our diamond-infused pick and grab all the rest of this ore that we've not been able to get up until now. So all this great redstone. The hammer's amazing. Look at it. Smacking it out at a 3x3 well, three three kind of... Um, ratio there smacking out nine pieces a time we are mining in style let me tell you so i'm just going to spend a few minutes here just grabbing up the rest of this good stuff in fact i'll probably end up filling all of our pockets to the absolute tippy top uh, before we go back down to base level remember those diamonds from earlier we can finally get those out now so one two three and four juicy juicy diamonds grab the rest of that certus we'll grab that lapis lazuli Lapis Lazuli or Lapas Lazuli? Which do you prefer? Let me know. There's some graphite there, some amber there as well. More coal. I'm sure that will come in handy at some point. There's a little bit of gold. We'll grab that. Uh, that's definitely going to come in handy if we're going to make more casting um, or, or smelting casts. There's a bit more gold again. Some lead, some uh, organic pieces around as well. I'll pop up here, grab this uh, quartz, that copper, some more iron, some more stonium. Got a decent amount of iron now and an absolute decent amount of coal as well. Aha, a foe. Time to fight with our newly finished edged sword. You know when the music changes to hard rock, it's time to fight. There's another creeper. Oh my god. Two creepers. I think one took out the other one. Let's have a look. No, he's still there. He's still down there. Wow's in about. Have some of this. And he's done another popper. Oh, well, at least he didn't pop on us. Just light this back up again after he's made a right mess of things. And another creeper! This is Creeper City. Let's see if we can actually fight this one and beat it. No. <laughs> Alright, um, so yeah, I think we've finished mining for uh, this this episode. We've got an absolute ton of stuff here. Preserve Curiosity as well, Diamond you've seen, Gold, Redstone, Quartz, you name it, we grabbed it. We've got some organic stuff, Lapis Lazuli, Stonium, Yellowite, Iron, yeah, really decent um, little mining hall there. And uh, as you've seen, these tools really make the job a lot more, you know, easier for us. A bit more, um, you know, less time time concentric. So we can just get things done. I think I'll make a little spot here for the pet rock. Instead of him being out and about and on the way, in the way, rather. Um, so what we'll do is we'll drop him in here. This might be a nice little spot as well to keep any animals that we may come across as well just to just to keep them in one place um so that chicken egg that we had earlier uh in one of the earlier episodes we might toss down that hole there see if it makes the cactus chicken for us what i also try and do is i'll try and save you guys the boredom of watching me smelt up all of this ore um and i'll organize my chests you know in uh in a way that better suits our time for the video. Let's finish up some of these quests now. So, base essence ingot, prosperity shard. Um, that was what we got for that prosperity shard. Let's see what we get. 
That's great. That's absolutely great. Because that is a quest that we also need to complete. Uh, which I was going to do next. Which is um, saving me a job. So a nice little cobblestone generator. Let's go and close that down now. Here we go. Hey, a nice set of climbing gloves. Um, would be really useful if we weren't stuck underground with very little climbing to do. But, as a man of vanity, I enjoy a nice pair of gloves. So, oh my god, wow! Another quest we need to finish is to create this stone barrel. So we'll uh, we'll pop this down here now that we've made it. It was a quite a straightforward one to make. Um, a little bit like the crucible, but with stone instead. Uh, these drying racks also act as a nice place to keep your old tools as well. So I think I'll hang up the old pick and the hammer and the uh, crook and the axe there as well. Uh, here we need to make the uh, auto sieve. So, uh, no we don't. This is a iron chest that I'm going to use to go with the cobblestone generator. Uh, so if I put the cobblestone generator down, pop a chest on the top, what it will do is it will just generate cobblestone for us all on its own I'll just leave that running and uh, yeah if we ever need our cobblestone to, to, to sift into the sifties and you know after we turn them to gravel and things that's a great little thing to do with it so uh, mending our tools is quite simple just take a piece of iron whack it through the system here uh, again if you want to speed up your tools make them quicker to use redstone is the key so I fully maxed out now this hammer with redstone, uh, so that's an extra 40% of speed on top. Generally speaking, I always have an abundance of redstone anyway, so it's a good use of all of that excess redstone. I'll just finish off here fixing the uh, the pick, because we've used that one, add a little bit of speed to that one as well. It's nice to see a little bit of red on the tool, gives it that bit of variety of color. Cool, so that's uh, all of the stuff smelted up. Again, I've saved you guys the time of watching me do that. We're just finishing up here with a little bit of silver. I don't know if you can see, there's a chisel up there as another tool that I've had to create um, in making the stone barrel. But um, I'm sure we're going to need that again in the future. It's great for turning kind of your base set stone into chiseled stone. Uh, I know some recipes will need it. Cool, so what is next? I think we need to just finish up the wowsy wall now and from there we'll kind of wrap up the end of the episode. Um, although, maybe we'll be able to finish up one more quest before we do so. But let's, uh, let's add our third entry to the wowsy wall. There's Clue and Crazy Boy. Cool, so we're just going to exchange the regular sieve with a heavy sieve because what the heavy sieve is going to allow us to be able to do is take compressed gravel or compressed cobblestone, compressed gravel, compressed anything and look at the yield we're getting this time. So I made a few just to kind of test it out. Uh, again, another reason why I want to make the diamond uh, sieve top is we'll just get more stuff but this is going to make sieving a lot more bountiful for us now and we're going to get loads more items in the process as you can see they nearly filled out my uh, my inventory just by sieving 20 compressed gravel blocks got one diamond we got some emerald all kinds of uh, thermatology um, bits and bobs as well so yeah auto sieve is another quest i want to be able to do today and probably this one will kind of finish us off for the end of this episode here as you can see yeah one two three four make that for the uh, panes of glass just take the excess out. So we want one iron there, one iron there, pane of glass in these uh, four slots and the uh, regular sieve, we can reuse that there. Two blocks of iron and hey presto, we've got ourselves an auto sieve to use for later on. And another quest completed. So let's have a look at um, what we get for this quest here.
simple sag mill. Now I think that's going to come in a lot of handy later on so I'm excited to see when that comes into play. Let's finish up this quest as well. Auto sieve. Basic flux storage. I think we've got enough of those already as well. And this final quest. Epic bacon time! It's nice to get more epic bacon. All right, guys, let's add our next person into the wowsy wall. And we will sign off from there. So drop in the uh, the nice block. We'll put the... I think what we'll do is we'll put this um, Enderman skull in the top there. I love how it follows me around and maybe it will carry on doing so. Like the wall of oddities. The eyes move around watching you as you go. We'll add the sign on and this week we are paying homage to another YouTube streamer called TayJ. TayJ, I've been watching his videos recently. He's got some great created content for Minecraft specifically. Adding him onto the wowsy wall. Welcome, TayJ. All right, guys, I think that's just the end of today's episode, episode four of Stoneblock. Really looking forward to building next episode for you, episode five. Guys, don't forget to leave a like, leave a subscribe on the video, and we will look forward to seeing you again. This is Star17 Gaming. See you again. Bye now. Didn't quite hear you come in. Welcome to Star 17's gaming channel. We're back for episode 5 of Stone Block 2. Apologies, I was busy working away, tinkering away at my smelter. Um, but let's get on with the episode. Today we are going to build us a mob farm. Um, now that we've kind of progressed a little bit in the game, I think it's about time that we were able to square away one need for us, which is the, uh, the constants of mob destruction for XP purposes and their drops and things like that. I've watched a couple of videos, I've watched a couple of other streamers and um, content creators with mob farms themselves. Um, I've opted for the drop mob farm, so obviously the enemies drop down from on high, hit a platform uh, which takes down most of their energy, and then I come along, swipe at their knees, one fail swoop and they're down. So it saves on the economy, on our tools, as well as it kind of keeps them clustered in one small area, you know, for, um, for, for, for sniffing up all of their goodies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and build it fairly relatively close to the base. Um, and if I bang out, I guess, you know, 10 by 10 by 10 blocks this way, um, I think that's relatively close enough. But then after I did what I did, I realized that I might have gone just that little bit too far away for the mobs to be automatically spawning in whilst I'm tinkering around at the base area. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I need to reconstruct this in a future episode, but we'll see how we do with this today. So I've built this kind of 30 blocks away from my main base. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna build in an upwards trajectory um, to a, a place where at the top we'll, we'll collect the mobs in, they'll spawn in from on high, um, and then we'll use water water sluices to push them down into the into the chasm below onto the platform where like I say it zaps most of their energy and I will just come along with my sword and just hack at their ankles and finish them off. So we're going to get up to a relatively decent um, height level um, just for the interest of kind of building at the moment I'm just going to build myself a little entryway up and down um, just as I'm going to need to move a few materials up and down and probably this might come in handy for the future as well if I need to come up here and check out what's going on or if I need to kind of almost semi help the mobs to spawn in by hanging around up here I've got an area where I can travel about and it's not all completely locked and closed down but um, we'll just go over to here now what the internet tells me is um, to you know, allow the enemies to drop down without dying, but takes down most of their energy. We want to make sure we're traveling down about 22 blocks. Um, so that's 19. Just tapped out there just to see where we were, so we can drop down a few more blocks there. 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We'll have a little Luke Lou. Oh, not quite at base level. Ah, one more to go. So 24 down to base level. So I just must remember to, to build the platform two or, or, or three blocks high off, off the ground plate there um, to benefit from their for their energy dips as they come down. Okay, so we're going to need to get some ladders and a door there. So let's build ourselves a few doors uh, with some wood planks here. Wood obviously is in abundance now that we have our automated well it's not really automated but our process for, for generating kind of trees in and hacking them down as we go uh, we'll also build in a bunch of ladders as well so we can travel up and down up and down into that area and um, like i said we need to check it out as we go because there's any shenanigans going on we have the opportunity to get in there so we'll take a bunch of sticks we'll turn them into ladders and we'll go over here we'll add the door in um, just in case for some unbeknown reason they decide that they want to try and travel their way down and into the base i'm able to block them off at least with a little bit of a door here um, and then our ladders obviously to get up and down so let me just speed us to the very tippy top to carry on with this video two hours and a half of content which i reduced down to 30 minutes again today guys so um, yeah, so I want the drop chasm to be three by three in uh, radius, and then I'm going to want obviously some some water channels coming in at a um, at a rate where it literally stops at the chasm edge there. So any any enemy, any mob that finds its way onto the onto the water channels there will automatically make their way down into the drop zone essentially. So we'll just bash out two, three, four, five, six, seven. For now, um, as I just get my uh, my bearings all measured up, and then we'll make this a nice kind of open area here so that they can all spawn in. The key element here for mob spawning is darkness. So as long as the area is nice and dark, we're going to get mobs. And um, instead of kind of having a mob room where you go in there and fight them, because let's face it, baby skeletons are not our friends. We want to be able to kind of destroy them in a, in a bit of a controlled environment um, so what we'll do here is we'll just create some channels for the water sluices um, by creating these platforms here for the mobs to spawn onto now guys it's that time of the video where i has to remind you uh, 50 likes please if at all possible so don't be afraid to hit that like and also while you're down there hit the subscribe button as well really helps the um the video growth my channel growth and um, like I said, I've got some real big, big plans in the future as well. So really looking forward to some of the future episodes. But um, yeah, help, help me meet my goals if you can of 50 likes and a few extra subbers wouldn't go amiss either. Cool, so this is starting to take shape now. Uh, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to then, like I say, 22 blocks from the top is the splash zone, we'll call it. So let's dig down 22 blocks. And here <clears throat> is going to be the platform. So what we'll do is we'll just create ourselves a little bit of a, a platform there and an area to, like I say, swish and slice at their knees. Um, and obviously as well, it needs to be short enough so that baby zombies can't get through, spiders can't get through, um, as well as all the regular mobs as well. So one block is not quite gonna cut it. It needs to be about a half block in, um, in height, you know, for me to be able to safely stand there and uh, dispatch and dispose of them. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here figuring out the best way to do that uh, without obstructing things too easily. Um, I spent an inordinate amount of time here mucking around trying to create the perfect, uh, like I say, area. And I think this is where I ended up, this is where I landed up. It's not perfect, I need to tweak it as we go, I think, but... Um, yeah, this is this is where we got to really. So a couple of half slab blocks um, up and down. I also want access up and down the ladder there as well. So I'll probably keep that open in just a few moments and open that part back up again. But a um, little half block here, I think that kind of serves its purpose a little bit. What we'll do then is um, just pop back upstairs again because what we'll need to do is start the waterways and remove all of the torches. We've got ourselves some um, baddies already. A compressed creeper. 
Now we remember from the last episode what compressed beasties do, um, but um, yeah, well, crikey, there's a few of them in here, so we've got a bit of a scrap on our hands. Let's dispatch of these baddies here. Hopefully they don't destroy me in the process. I'll run away just for a few minutes to uh, get some health back. We've just lost a bunch of hearts there. Already this is not looking great. I should have thought about this before running away and putting enough torches up there to stop these guys from spawning in early. But now I've made my bed. I have to sleep in it. Let's see if we can take down this skeleton without him taking me down. Good. We've got one and a half hearts left. Let's regen a little bit. Um, already we're getting some drops from them. So the mob farm is starting to do its job by spawning in things in the dark, even though it's not that dark up there. Um, so it kind of feels a bit promising for now. It gives me a, a, a little taste of what's to come. But we also need to finish this area too. Um, especially now that we're seeing mobs up there, they can drop down at any time. Obviously without the water though, that's not, not completely possible for them yet. That compressed creeper is creeping me out, um, thinking about it and going back up there again. So let's hope that he doesn't cause us any mischief or, or, or break anything up here. Um, because that would be an absolute nightmare. If we get a creeper up here that already starts to create mess of the things that we've created, um, that would that would be that would be a nightmare. I'd have to restart and start again. Um, so let's just pop back. Oh, hello, there's another skeleton right at the top. And there's that creeper and he popped. He did pop. I wonder how much mess he's made, but... Um, Oh, by the looks of things, he's just destroyed the area that I need to destroy anyway. So that's not terrible. I'm down to a half heart now. Oh, and we've been shot by a baby skeleton from on top. He definitely had the high ground on us that time. Let's respawn in. Let's take care of this baby skeleton. It's rousing about on the steps. I got revenge on him. That's great. Back to the top here. And for some reason, I've chosen to fight with a ladder instead of a sword. There's a loot drop over there. We're going to want that. Let's run away though because they're starting to, 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 to take take possession of that area up there. We're getting a little bit of XP. I can see a few droppies in there and that's going to be a problem. How do we get them drops safely to us without breaking in and breaking out again? Let's have a look what's inside these drops here. So we've got a wooden chest transporter and a slime ball. Okay, interesting loot, we'll take it. And in the other one, we've got three eggs, very good, and an ocelot bait. I wonder if later on I can do something with these eggs with the roost and get some chickens on the go. Um, let's get back up here and still try and clean up our mess um, that they've made. Fix that ladder eventually as well, but I need to get enough light up here. Okay, we've got a few skellies, a few baby skellies. We hate them, we absolutely hate them. We've had a death so far. No, have we had a death yet? I can't can't recall if we have. I think we have. Yeah, one death so far on top of the ones that we've had from previous episode. We've got a baby skeleton on the steps and he's done us deep again. Um, so we'll just pop our little death marker there. And there's, there's that goggly-eyed skeleton. Baby addition. Slice him because he's not doing us any damage there at the moment. And let's, again, let's see if we can get up there and clean up our mess. That's two deaths this episode. Latest death and old death, that's right. I think that brings our tally of deaths up to five so far for this playthrough. Let's see if we can remember that number, star 17. Um, so five deaths, I wonder what it will be at the end. I'll try and keep track for Jarls. And certainly try and make sure that we video most, if not all of them. Okay, so we've still got some baddies up here. God dang, I've, 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 I remember when I made this. I cursed myself for not putting enough torches up there and uh, lighting the area up. Make this be a tool tip for you, a tool tip, a, a tall tip for you all, a top tip for you all. Uh, light the area before you run away and start grabbing buckets of water and other materials for your build. Put enough torches up there so that you're not having to deal with this mess as you go back up again. So luckily for us though, we've got the tool launcher, the tool launcher, sorry, the torch launcher. Let's use this as, as a, a lighting, a projected lighting system. There's a spider coming in. Oh, we can hit him with the, <laughs> we can hit him with the torches. It's not doing a great deal of damage, but maybe enough to knock him down. Now we're gonna need to use our sword and finish the job that way. Take that spider only. Okay, we've got two and a half hearts left. Do we dare go in there and see what's left? I can still see some mobs in there. 
But we went in, I cleared up the area, we got right down to half a heart, but now I'm lining up with torches, we should have no mobs until I remove the torches later on, bothering us now. So uh, over there you can see a little bit of mess that a creeper made, no problem, I can fix that. Um, but okay, we're back. We're back on track and we can get back to the episode. I didn't want this whole episode to be about making a mob farm. Um, so we'll try and finish up as quickly as possible. So I'm just gonna, like I say, put a few more torches around just for safety sakes and make sure we've got the area nice and lit, especially now as I'm only half a heart. I'm just gonna pop out a little spot here to create a infinite water pool just for, for, for working. For now, I'll remove that at the end. I'll also fill the holes that these creepers have just made. But that's the kind of the general size of the hole, minus that one block there. Three by three, and that should allow most of the, the mobs to, to drop down into that splash zone down there, ready for splishy splashy and swishy swashy on the old legaronis. So let's sprint back to base and grab some H2O. Oh, I can see a loot crate there. Okay, I'm just gonna, gonna break this out just for a second. Oh, there's my water bucket. Um, and uh, grab those little drops aronis. Some Ethereum there, I can see. Okay, back up we go with the water bucket. Let's go to our infinite water pool here. And we'll grab another one. We'll just drop it in there. Okay, so I've realized that in order for water to kind of reach its edge without dropping down, we want to be at eight. Eight blocks to the edge there. So I've just knocked it out one more, one more spot. Um, and then we'll pop one bucket of water in from the middle and the two outside spots there and like you can see there it brings us right to the edge there and it doesn't send water down um, into the splash there. So we'll, we'll replicate that uh, on the right and the left hand side of the room here and I think after that we should be in a good spot to take away our torches and run 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 away and let the mob spawning commence. So we we'll put one there, we we'll put one on this side as well. Actually, we don't need one in the middle because everything is now pushing down nicely and it's reaching the edges. And like I say, yeah, the objective is that the mobs spawn up on these kind of platform areas here and then they make their way down to um, the, the splash or into the sluice spots and then the water will push them down and we'll break them at the bottom with a, with a nice shiny blade. Cool, excellent. There we go. So we are on track now. I just need to, to fill that hole there. Sorry, fill the hole. Fill the, the infinite water pool back up again with stone so we don't have that there. Obviously mobs don't spawn on water, so that needs to go away. And um, yeah, remove the torches, remove that one block there. Close the door and hope for the best. So let's just clean this up. Doop, doop, doop. I mean, the other mob spawning um, technique that I also run into as well was a more kind of ground version. You just create an open enough area for them to spawn into, um, but then you just make the recess big enough for you to be able to swipe at them um, without them being able to get out and, and attack you, basically. So um, maybe that's something that we might end up trying in the future. So now that we've done the, um, the kind of finalization, if you like, of the, of the mob spawn area, as you can see, I'm getting some mobs drop in. They're only taking one hit to kill, that's good. This one has spawned down here because it's not light enough, not because he got out of the mob spawner. So I just need to make sure this area is a little bit lighter for the future as well. But that uh, baby zombie, baby skeleton rather, has caused me no mind. Um, so another thing that I wanted to do this episode as well is create a compressed hammer. Uh, so we need to make nine individual hammers to make one compressed hammer. Why, you might be asking, Star 17, do you need to have a compressed hammer? Well, in order to um, break down compressed cobblestone into a multitude of gravel and make our working a lot more easier for ourselves, I'm going to need a compressed hammer to be able to, to, to deal with the compressed um, cobblestone and, and compressed 
kind of blocks and items that we'll be using obviously later on for sifting. So as you can see here, taking this compressed cobblestone, laying it all out nicely on the ground, I can take, so I've got a full stack here of 64. Um, I'll drop these all down. I can take my compressed hammer there, as you can see, and get all of that juicy gravel. Rinse, repeat. And then if I compress the gravel, and put it through the sieve, we will be getting ores, diamonds, and everything for days. And it's going to make uh, you know our 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 mission, our journeys a lot more straightforward. So yeah, taking all of those 64, those full stacks of gravel there, putting them into a three by three grid fashion, I can then compress the gravel down. So I'm going to continue this with the cobblestone a little bit more. So I've got a little bit more compressed gravel. Right, I've almost destroyed this hammer already. Because my objective there is to make a, um, a diamond mesh so that we can have the absolute top tier sieve and uh, be getting the best yield out of everything that we're doing. So like I say, adding into these 64, these, these full stacks to make compressed gravel there's another full stack of those. I'll be able to put the compressed gravel through the heavy sieve here. I've just sped up time just a little bit just to make it less boring for you to watch. As boring as it was for me to actually process them. Um, you can see I'm getting a lot of items back. I will check my inventory in just a mo. As you can see here we've pretty much filled things out. We've got a bunch of diamonds, emeralds, all of these crystals here. So if I take six diamonds and our iron mesh, we can make a diamond stiffened mesh. And that's top tier now with the with the heavy oak sieve. And that means that we're just going to get the absolute best yield now from, from this point and onwards when sieving our goods. All right, back to the mob spawner. Let's see how we're doing. Any mobs up here? I can't see anything. Why not? Why not? So we're checking out upstairs. There's definitely mobs up here. But for some reason, they're not getting down onto the water unless I go in. So I had a moment of thought, and maybe what I need to do is create a way for them to see me. I'm just putting a couple of holes in place. Because once they see me, they kind of get aggroed and they kind of move in my direction. I'll take a couple of hits from that skeleton there. But they're moving to the water sluices and making their way down into the splash zone. Let's just check they have in fact done that. I need to fix that ladder at some point because that is going to annoy the heck out of me. So let's have a look here. Yep, there they are, hanging ten. So one hit, one hit, back, back, back before that creeper pops and makes a right mess. One hit, one hit, and come closer, zombie. One hit. We're also, because the, the tools that we're using have magnetism on it, I think we are dragging all of the goodies back. We don't need to, to break the thing every time to get the loot. So yeah, one hit, one hit, one hit. Please don't pop, Mr. Creeper. Slash, slash. There we go, we're getting all of their goods. So it's kind of working. With a little bit of manual interaction, the mob farm is kind of working. We just need to go upstairs every now and again and just allow them to see me. So I'm just gonna pop some glass up here. Maybe that might help and make things safer for me. If I just glass the area off so I can see what's going on, and they can certainly see me, maybe that will help. And what we can do a little bit later on, you know, after we've been working for a while, the mobs have spawned in, just walk on up, invite them to come for a swim in the water, let them drop to the, uh, to the, to the splash zone down there, and uh, we'll finish them up at the bottom. So it kind of works. It could be better, and I think maybe in one of the future episodes I'll still tweak it and make it better. But it's working for us at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Like I said, didn't want this whole episode to be about mob farms. Even though I'm going to probably put on the YouTube title that this is going to be building a mob farm. But, you know, we, this, is, this is what we've been able to achieve so far. So 22 minutes into the episode, and I think we're quite happy with how this uh, mob farm has, has gone. It could be better, but... Hey, I'm still learning at Minecraft. I wouldn't call myself a professional by any means necessary. Um, these mobs, these mods, help me learn a lot more about how the, the game mechanics work. 
and obviously how to, to make it work better for me as well. So now we've got a nice healthy amount of mobs up there to slash away. Oh, we're getting some, some loot crates now as well. We're getting the Inferium. We're getting some flesh, some rotten flesh. We, we, we're just loving this. We're just swiping and slashing. We've got our XP up to level 14, which isn't bad because we've died a couple of times today. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I have been running out of food. So this rotten flesh acts as a wonderful food source. Um, I think I mentioned it in the last episode. Um, so we're going to hang that up, get that all nicely dried out into monster jerky. And um, nom, nom, nom ourselves to content. I'm going to use the rest of these drying racks up here as an area to keep our tools as well. So there's our chisel that can go up. What else have we got here? Our hammer. It's hammer time. So we've got a couple of quests uh, to do as well. I want to do this one here, make some netherrack. Now this, this took absolutely ages. I need to make enough lava to add um, a block, not a block, but a piece of redstone into, and that created netherrack. I had to do that 16 times. So waiting for the lava to process 16 times took forever. So I've sped that all up for you. And um, in a second, you'll see the final outcome of all of that. That took a good 45 minutes in, in all. Um, I could have made it easier for myself as well. Popping it back up to the mob farm. As you can see, things are spawning, which is great but they're not reacting now because I'm behind the glass. So what I think I need to do is make a real life hole. All of a sudden, they can see my smiling face from behind it and uh, I'll lure them out that way. We still got a lot of safety and protection here. Hello, Mr. Spider. How about you come and see us? There we go. Down he pops. Nope, he's managed to get himself stuck up there. Oh well, nearly got him. And you over there, Mr. Zombie, let's make another one one block hole so you can see us and we'll see you at the bottom take care now bye swishy swipe swishy swipe oh we got a green loot crate that time and i will enjoy all of your juicy rotten flesh for my for myself i think what we're going to do in this episode is well we're going to upgrade the cobblestone generator now that i am processing these materials like a son of a gun um, we will grab some iron, we'll put it around the outside of the cobblestone generator, we'll turn that to tier 2, that's also another quest completed. Um, so that's great. Process some more gravel uh, with our diamond stiffened mesh, look at it go, I have sped things up a little bit for you, but um, we are processing now big style and all of our yields are going to be as good as they can possibly be. Um, all of a sudden, my inventory is full, everything is everywhere. So as you can see here, absolutely full to the brim of stuff. 16 diamonds I can see there, 14 emeralds. I'm going to spend a bit of time, not on stream, but off stream, processing all of this stuff. I'm also going to ch turn the iron cobblestone generator into a diamond cobblestone generator. That's tier 3. So we're going to be making some cobblestone at a ridiculous level. Uh, as you can see there, 1, 2, 3, it's going up pretty quickly. Um, like I said, also, yeah, we need bunches and bunches of lava to finish off this netherrack. Um, we need 16 of them. There is a way that I can actually make that lava um, melt a lot quicker to times five level, actually using netherrack and a flint and steel, just lighting the fire on the top there. But maybe that's something we'll save for a future episode. So let's close off some of the quests that we've completed here then. So we've got uh, cobblestone generator tier two that we can put in our thing for. We also got this one complete as well. 16 nether axe gives us a biome marker. I'm going to need to do some research and figure out exactly what that means. But as far as I'm aware, there is no um, nether uh, dimension on this game that you create with uh, obsidian so maybe this has something to do with it i'll do some research like i said for a future episode cobblestone tier two let's hit the go button on that one what do we get Bruh. a demonically gargantuan drum fantastic i think tier three let's hit the button on this one two times Woo! diamond tier on a barrel Maybe that will come in handy a little bit in the future as well. All right, let's come back to the Wowsy Wall then. So we need to add our fourth installation into the Wowsy Wall here. 
So I have my stone block. We'll take our sign. Let's today pay homage to James Lee 85. James Lee 85 has a Twitch channel, uh, also has a YouTube channel as well. Primarily is doing a lot of Final Fantasy content at the moment. Uh, is an in real life friend of mine and has been spending some time on my channel. So it's time to pay homage to him as well. So James Lee 85, welcome to the Wowza Wall. Welcome everybody to the end of this episode as well. So hopefully I've given you some good stuff to, to, to look at this time around. Uh, we've made our mob farm. We've completed a few quests. We are progressing nicely in the game. I'm Star17. Thank you for watching. Guys, help me get 50 likes. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the bottom here.